for those who don't know me, hopefully you've all met me before. Um, my name is Chris Smith. I'm the, one of the Cornea Fellows working here for the year, stepping on y'all's toes. Don't worry, it'll be over sooner than you hope. Um, the, I'm going to talk about a project I've been working on and hopefully will be submit, or hopefully publishing soon with uh, Dr. Abu Shusha. He was my senior um, at St. Louis University and now he's a cornea faculty at Bascom Palmer. And will this advance? Maybe not. Maybe this one. Sounds good. Oh yeah, there you go, the old clap on. So this is the statistics I got. I'm very proud of the cornea world and how far they've come from 2005. And these numbers of uh, 42,000 full thickness now down, it's cut in half almost to 2015. Uh, 19,000 was the statistics there. And mainly for the, ad, or in the more use of endothelial transplants. Uh, these were the indications mainly Keratoconus for full thickness transplant, but also for other things like trauma and still endothelial dysfunction. Some people are doing that. Um, we have a ways to go still with our graft survival. This is the about 60 to 80 percent they're quoting as far as um, oh, uh, how long term rates. And so uh, this is kind of where. Um, we kind of wanted to branch off with this idea and our thought process on um, looking at these graphs post-operatively. Um, these are some of the reasons why they fail. Usually the, the highest is non-immune, just kind of failure of the graft, but also it can be immunologic rejection. Um, this is still the most and probably best way we can evaluate these graphs after transplant. We're not attempting by our research to replace this, a slit lamp examination, uh, looking at corneal edema, looking how uh, well the graft is doing under the slit lamp. This gives us a better idea of how to taper our treatments. But another one, another kind of imaging modality that's highly published is uh, this confo confocal microscopy, looking at endothelial cell density. And you'll hear, hear a lot of this of what's the cell count, what are we, and we always worry about what the cell count is. And preoperatively, it's a great um, tool to see how uh, before we transplant. Um, and then, so it, it also this was a study done, um, and it it's, it gives good six month the six month endothelial cell density was a good indicator of how well your graft was gonna do. They found you know, higher numbers, 2,500 and greater, only had a 2% failure rate, but while lower numbers in the, in the less than 1,700 had a 13% failure rate um, in five years. Also, they saw uh, central corneal thickness was, there was a kind of a good threshold. Um, this line here is 600 and there was quite a big Quite a, quite a bit uh, drop off when the CCT was greater than 600. Um, so these are two things, two different Im imaging modalities that's currently being used to evaluate these PK graphs after transplantation. Um, another another one is polymegathism, which doesn't have a lot of research for it. Um, this is the coefficient of variation. If you Average the size, the cell size in the un, under confocal microscopy, and if the bigger variation, we suspect that there's a lot more disease there, and the graft isn't going to do as well. But this one isn't as highly published. We propose in our research an, a new tool uh, using anterior segment uh, OCT to measure decimate. We call it decimase membrane complex thickness, and it's. Uh, Using anterior segment OCT, you can, with calipers, measure this thickness, and I'll show you how we kind of came about this. This was published in 2010. Uh, the top is a healthy 25-year-old um, cornea. The middle is kind of a 60, is a 65-year-old healthy cornea, and then the lower has 
Fuchs dystrophy. And if you look, there's kind of two hyper-reflective bands here, which, um, can I get this? And this is where we go. So there's a hyper-reflective band, if you can appreciate that here. So the images sometimes, it's easier to, um, we built a software that can actually pick up this um, transition in the density. And if you measure the thickness from the, the two hyper-reflective bands to the end, um, that's kind of the complex, and we suspect that's the start of decimase membrane all the way through endothelial cell. And this with age, we, it was statistically thicker with just age from our healthy 25-year-old to our 65-year-old, but also with this diseased cornea, there's, you can tell it's a lot thicker here. So that was... We wanted to take it one further in this project we did. We evaluated this complex and compared it to a more common uh, imaging modality of endothelial cell density and see which is better at predicting the, which one correlated with the slit lamp examination, a clinical examination better. So we, what we did is we took 42 graphs and they each got the bo both of the imagings as well as uh, slit lamp examination by a cornea trained specialist. And we divided these after um, clinical examination, they were divided into a rejection and a clear group just on what they looked at at slit lamp exam. And then after that, this is a, just a image of what, what a cell count would look like. And this is the best way to do it. A lot of, you'll see a lot of cell counts. They just kind of click as fast as they can, but if you really want a good good image, you have to outline these cells and it'll give you an accurate area over um, how many cells. This is called a variable frame technique. And then uh, also we measured central corneal thickness and decimase membrane thickness. If you can see these arrows, here's that hyper-reflective band all the way to the end. Um, and then they were compared under uh, receiving operating characteristic curves to see which has more specific or to which diagnostic is more specific. We started as well this um, math equation and this, if, if you think one argument might be that if the whole cornea is going to fail, it's going to suck up fluid like a sponge. So of course decimase and central cornea thickness is going to get bigger. So we made this index to see how much more decimase membrane is um, growing compared to the cornea, central corneal thickness. We used 33 because the numbers usually came out to be about one for normal corneas. This is our uh, demographics of the patients we saw. Uh, and moving on, the results showed that in our, uh, from, compared from our clear and our rejection group after endothelial slit, slit lamp examination, we had 15 graphs here and 43 in our rejection group. And um, so this is the decimase membrane thickness is 15 microns and 43 in the rejection group. And it was uh, highly statistically significant between the groups. Also central corneal thickness was as well as expected as these corneas kind of are a lot thicker. And then we also, if, if you apply the, our um, indices, that was significant as well with, um, it was a lot higher, uh, higher in the rejection group compared to the clear group, which suggests that the decimase membrane is growing thicker than the entire cornea. Um, so this just kind of summarizes the results as well. So, um, Looking at the ROC curves, uh, the area under the the decimase membrane thickness was a lot more, so it, was a, it showed a lot higher um, ability to correlate between the two groups, more specific and sensitive compared to the two. Uh, also of note, the disease corneas are really difficult with to get an accurate endothelial cell density measurement with the confocal microscopy. With any of that haze, you, you really need a clear picture to be able to reflect and get a good cell count. So the images were 
kind of crummy. So we didn't get, we didn't obtain all of the, we didn't obtain uh, endothelial cell density from all of our rejected groups, but we were able to, with the anterior segment imaging, it was a lot slicker, a lot easier for something like a, especially a technician to be able to use if you want to use in clinic later. And this is just an example of what the two pictures of a clear and a rejection group, a lot more difficult to get a clear image because of the irregularity of that layer. Further, we looked at these under the histo, histopathology, um, taking these corneas and measuring them. And this is kind of, we would measure the thickness here and then compare those. Um, and we saw that um, there, both the CCT and endothelial cell density were um, different in the two control rejected graphs, which is expected. But one thing we definitely um, learned from this, looking at the histopathology that was helpful, this is just shows the sensitivities higher with the endothelial thickness. But what was really interesting in this part of the study was um, when you look at the histopathology, we were expecting, oh, there's gonna be this huge retrocorneal membrane, that's what we're measuring if or, or is it the actually decimase membrane that's growing on these rejected graphs? And it showed that um, there were, of these 31 rejected graphs in, in this group, there was only three samples that actually had a retrocorneal membrane, and there was still a highly significant um, change with our decimase membrane thickness was, uh, you know, almost double um, ex vivo compared to our control group there, so. That was uh, kind of interesting. And this is just uh, a small study and there's a lot to, to move forward and really understand the utility of this uh, because this is just a step, can we Im image this? And then I think the next step is how will it change our clinical judgment? Will, can we, will this change over time? Is it reversible? is can we slow it down and with, with steroid treatment and whatnot. And so that's kind of our next goal. So you have any questions? Um, what do you envision the, the clinical utility of this being in the future? That I, I will, will be, that's the next question we're asking. Um, I think if there's any if there's any judgment call, if it, any, any borderline of where, you know, where this is going, how, how is my graph changing over time? Can we reverse that with a certain amount of steroids or uh, hopefully another treatment in the future? Um, I think that is the goal, is it ultimately to um, taper down our treatments, but that's a, a lot of questions down the road that we don't have any answers for yet, so this is just the first step. And, and then I may have missed it, but what what is just just the hypothesis for you know pathophysiology? Why is this occurring? Oh, so the hypothesis is just as with any um, transplant, you you figure think of a kidney transplant. Some of the first if, if you cut it up after. A rejection episode. First thing of deposition is usually doesn't or uh, not just uh, basement membranes are getting thicker um, at the rejection, and so the this is the first time where we can actually look at uh, real life in vivo um, tissue and watch that membrane grow. <coughs> because before you know usually it's failed. Usually the kidney transplants failed, and there's. Um, the basement membrane is quite uh, thickened of these um, vasculature tissues. You know, basement membrane thickens in endothelial dysfunction, and I think Fuchs is the classic example of that. And so <coughs> endothelial cells do lay down these extra basement membranes when you've got a dysfunctional endothelium, such as a graft that's beginning to reject that endothelium is damaged for some reason, it starts putting out extra basement membranes. So this is really a 
a marker of endothelial dysfunction in general. So it's interesting that nobody thought of this before. I mean, this is a very clever way of, of looking at this when you can't get the good endothelial counts directly through an endeavorous cornea. So it'd be interesting to see if you can get correlations on the degree of thickening and can you do anything to slow it down and yeah. does that relate to that graft eventually failing? Those are going to be the questions that would be you know, really important to answer with, with further studies of this group of patients. And we hope to be able to correlate it with the more used DSEC and DMEC in the future because as we, those, those ones don't fail as much as full thickness transplants, but as we see, the numbers are dropping dramatically with full thickness transplant. I don't see in my lifetime getting rid of trans, full thickness transplants completely, but you know, hopefully. Thank you.